Welcome back, everybody. Well, I finally did it. I finally bought my first welder. After much research and soul searching, I, I finally decided to get the Titanium Flux 125 from Harbor Freight. As you may already know, this is a fairly new welder, but already quite popular for beginning welders. So I decided to go with this flux core welder because it's a fairly easy process to learn, supposedly, uh, and it will do a lot of light duty stuff up to 3 16ths of an inch. So today I'm going to cover the setup of the welder and you will witness me perform my very first welds, which I'm sure is going to be entertaining, at least. I'll also cover some of the accessories that I got with it that every beginning welder will need getting started welding. Here are the specs on this welder. It's priced at $199.99, but it's often on sale with a coupon for $179.99. It's powered by 120 volts AC, and you'll need a 20 amp circuit to operate the welder at maximum output. It uses inverter technology for a smooth DC output with a stable arc. The output amperage range is from 30 to 125 amps. Its duty cycle is 30% at 90 amps. The open circuit voltage is 21.6 volts. The wire feed speed range is from 60 to 200 inches per minute. It can feed both 0.03 and 0.035 inch flux core wire. It can weld mild steel from 18 gauge to 3 16 inch thick. It handles standard 4 inch 2 pound wire spools. And finally it weighs in at 15 pounds which is very light for the amount of power this thing has and makes it very portable. Wire spools are loaded from the top of this unit. It comes with a one pound spool of E71T-GS.03 inch flux core wire. Keep your thumb or finger on the end of that wire while putting it on the spindle because it is eager to escape that spool. Put the spool plate on followed by the spring, then the knob and tighten the knob just enough to provide resistance to keep the spool from unwinding once the wire is fed into the feed system. Carefully feed the wire into the wire inlet liner and then hold it and loosen the feed tensioner then swing it up so you can open the idler arm. By the way, the feed roller lives under this little hatch. It comes from the factory set for 0.03 inches wire, but you can switch it to 0.035 inch wire just by flipping it upside down. Push the wire past the feed roller into the feed tube on the other side, making sure the wire is in the groove of the feed roller. Then close the idler arm, flip the tensioner back down and tighten just a little bit. You'll adjust this in a moment. Turn the welder on. Then remove the nozzle and contact tip from the flux gun. Make sure the flux gun cable has no tight bends in it. Press and hold the cold feed switch. You should see the wire start to feed into the flux gun. If not, tighten the feed tension knob a little more until it starts feeding the wire. Release the cold feed button when you have about two inches sticking out of the gun. Screw the contact tip and nozzle back on the gun. Test for proper feed tension by holding the flux gun two to three inches from a block of wood and pull the trigger. If the wire starts to bend after it hits the wood, your tension is right. If not, give the tensioner knob another half turn and try it again until it does bend. Cut the wire off about 3 eighths to a half inch from the contact tip. Some things to note about this welder is you cannot remove the leads. These are not replaceable, at least not easily. You'd have to do some disassembly. Predictably, the wire gun is not super well made. It's plastic, but it feels like a very hard plastic, I'll give you that. 
It's got a, a plastic nozzle that screws on. This is Since this is gasless, there's no provision for gas. And then there's your tip. This happens to be a .030 tip. It also comes with an extra .03 tip, contact tip, and two extra plastic nozzles. Also, the ground clamp is cheaply made, so you can expect to replace this after a while. But for a starter welder, it's what you'd expect. Now, my makeshift welding table is made from the inverted frame that my Titan wood chipper came in. And when I saw this thing, all I have held on to it because I knew that would probably make a great first welding table. And I happened to have a piece of punched metal around that I could lay on top to be the first top for it. So this is a good, uh, very, almost no cost, essentially no cost welding table for me for now. Some of the accessories you'll need as a new welder include some scraps of mild steel of varying thicknesses to practice on. These pieces are from a length of two and a half inch 10 gauge flat bar stock I had that I cut up. A couple of C-clamps are handy for holding your work pieces to the welding table. A wire brush and chip hammer are essential for removing slag and cleaning welds. I chose a combo one. You'll want something that makes visible marks on metal, like this Mark All Silver Streak pen, which seems to be a favorite among metal fabricators. And until I get some MIG pliers, a pair of needle nose pliers with cutters will do for cutting and tugging on the flux wire. A pair of welding gloves are a must. I'll talk more about the gloves shortly. A set of metal gauges are handy for quickly determining the thickness of the metal you're working with. Some nozzle gel to prolong the life of contact tips. Some anti-spatter spray to help prevent the flux core spatter from sticking to your work. A drill or rotary grinder with a wire wheel to clean mill scale off the metal and to clean and polish your welds. And finally a rotary grinder with a metal cutoff wheel which is nice to have to cut metal with. Of course you'll need the proper personal protective gear including safety glasses, a welding jacket, and of course, especially in my case, since I'm bald, a baseball cap on backwards. And last but personally not least, a welding helmet. For my welding helmet, I chose the very popular Antra Ant Phi X60 series welding helmet that is highly rated on Amazon. It's considered a great entry level auto darkening welding helmet. One of the things that I appreciate about the manual that comes with the Titanium Flux 125 is they've got a good section, several pages devoted to basic welding techniques. So if you're brand new, they show you uh, the basics of terminology of a string bead, stringer bead, weave bead. Uh, how you hold your uh, flux gun with respect to your welding material, how to test for good welds, and some diagrams showing both good and bad welds. So they spend quite a few pages just helping you get going right here. I think that's great. It also includes this card which gives you some photos of what a good weld looks like and what some poor welds look like and what to do to fix them if they look like these certain pictures here, which I think that's pretty neat. I clamp my first piece to the table, then put the ground clamp on the edge of the table. I turn on the welder, making sure the flux gun is not in contact with the table. To get the welder set for 10 gauge steel, I refer to the chart on the inside of the welder top. Since the 10 gauge steel is a little thicker than 1 8 inch, I chose to start off with the voltage set at F.5 and a wire speed of 6. Oh, and of course ventilation is very important, so I open a window and turn on the shop vent fan. I set my auto darkening welding helmet to 10 based on the chart in the manual. I also dip the contact tip in the nozzle gel, then clip the wire back to about a half inch. So finally, the moment of truth. I position the tip about a half inch above the metal, leaning it back about 15 degrees. Wish me luck. As the saying goes, if there's slag, you drag, which is true of flux core and stick welding. So I pull the flux gun toward me, allowing the flux to protect the hot metal.
Overall, that's a better weld than I was expecting for my very first weld. A lot more spatter than I thought it might, even though FluxCore is famous for that. But because I'm set up for, it's, well, it's by default electronegative, uh, which is supposed to reduce spatter, um, that is better than I would have imagined a first run. I'm going to do a few more beads right beside it, and this time I think I'll try some of that anti-spatter to see if it'll actually keeps it from sticking to the metal. All right, I can't believe y'all sat there and let me do both those first two welds without gloves. However, I got out away from it unscathed. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, that anti-spatter stuff seems to does seem to make a difference because I can knock the little beads off of this one where I used it on. Whereas the beads are pretty much stuck on the other ones. So, Andy Spatter may well be worth it. So I prep another piece and run some more practice beads. First, four more stringers, then alternating between stringers and weaves on another piece. All right, let's see, can we do better? All right, for you guys that are welders out there, you tell me in the comments how you think I'm doing here on these first ones. They're actually not as ugly as I expected them to be, but then I am certainly not experienced yet. They're not even, and I noticed I was still making some of the same mistakes of not watching my distance to work from the tip, getting a little long on that, tending to lean over. Uh, with the angle and not being consistent with my weave. I, I tend to like to do the weave, although I should probably just practice the straight stringer first, so I might uh, set up another piece for and do that. For my next set of welds, I decided to change these plain old ordinary garden variety leather gloves. Because I've noticed that a lot of welders just tend to use regular le leather gloves. One of the reasons I think that's going to work better for this type of welding is because you need a little more dexterity when operating a gun as opposed to, say, a, using just holding a stinger with a stick welder. For one thing, it beats being barehanded like I was with those first two welds. So what do you guys think? Uh, again, this is a weave, stringer, weave, stringer. I guess the stringer makes sense if you do need a narrower bead. And believe me, these are not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not claiming these are examples of, of good versions of either one, but uh, better than I thought I'd be doing though. Next, I try a lap weld. to take practice these at angle things that is just but ugly I try a second pass that's actually better but it doesn't look well connected all right Finally got a decent amount of metal on there, but it sure isn't pretty. So I flip the piece over and try again.
Would you look at that? That ain't too shabby. That ain't too shabby. That is way better. I see a couple little uh, potholes there. Got a little porosity going on. But that is just vastly better than that first pass. So I want to thank you for joining me on my first adventure into welding. I, there's some takeaways here. The first is it's a lot of fun. It is really neat to be able to have the power to join metal together and make it structurally sound, which I hope some of these are, and as I practice more, it will be better. The second takeaway is if you live in a rural area like I do, and you have equipment, a tractor, and things like that, it's great to be able to do your own repairs on equipment like that, or fabricate something that you might need to go with it. It looks like this Titan Flux 125 welder from Harbor Freight is a great and expensive investment for beginner welders. It packs a lot of punch in a small 15-pound package. So to you experienced welders out there, let me know how I did in the comments. Especially Joe Lesage, you're an excellent welder. You've done an awful lot on your channel. Let me know. Uh, and Tractor Man 44, also an experienced welder, how'd I do? And anyone else out, out there that's got some comments, I would love to hear them. And also uh, my other viewers who read the comments can learn from you as well. So if you're considering getting into welding, then take heart that it is not that expensive and it is a boatload of fun. And if you found this video to be useful, please click that like button, leave a comment, and by all means subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. Just so you know, this is about the only time you'll ever see me wear a baseball cap backwards.